Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this ingenious EWS 356 fit Wi-Fi 6 access point. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So let's get this open. So this is a two by two dual band indoor access point. We have some QR codes for the quick start guide and for the mobile app. And here's the access point. So Ingenious Fit is marketed towards small office, medium office, and home use. So the cover here is plastic. So let's turn it over. So under my hand is the code for setting it up. So here we have DC power input and we have an ethernet jack and this supports power over ethernet, meaning you can supply the network and power to this with one cable. Let's open up here. Here we have brackets for mounting it to T-Track. There's two different sizes of that. And this is a mount for mounting it to a pole. Also, you can put screws in these and just mount them to any ceiling. Here we have some anchors, zip ties, and some other anchors. So you mount this to a ceiling and then you can slide the access point onto it, like so. So the Ingenious Fit access point can be cloud managed. If you want or need more privacy, you can also manage this with an on-site controller. So that's the Ingenious Fit controller. And this was also provided to me by Ingenious. In today's video, I'll be setting this up in the cloud. So I'll go over a couple things here. Now more experienced people may know this stuff, but there might be people looking at this as an alternative to hiring an IT company and they're trying to learn this stuff. So there are a couple ways to hook this up to our network and a couple of different ways to power this. So to get network to this, we'll plug it into a network cable. So now we can connect this to our network. For power, we can use a 12 volt power adapter and we can plug that in. So this will then plug into 120 volt outlet. So this is probably the least ideal way, but there may be some people setting this up where this is a good solution for them. So I wanted to cover it. So if you're a small business and you have a network closet and you're putting the access point in that closet and you have power, you can plug right into that and power it. So I'm going to go over the power options, kind of worst to best, although I shouldn't say worst because this might be the best solution for someone. So the next option is a PoE injector, and this is the Ingenious EPA 5006GR. So this has two ports on it. It has PoE and LAN. So we'll plug the ethernet from our access point into PoE here, and this will plug into power, and then we'll connect from LAN to our network. So this would be back at your wiring closet with your network equipment, and then you could have a very long ethernet cable. So you might have a 100 foot ethernet cable running from your network closet to where this is mounted. So this could be in the middle of a conference room and you have this one cable sending your power and your ethernet. So this is a good option if you have a few access points and maybe you have one or two access points. You could have one of these for each access point. Now the best option if you have multiple access points is something like this. This is the Ingenious EWS 2910P fit. And again, this Ingenious equipment was sent to me for previous videos, but I'm using it in this video also. So this is an eight port PoE switch. So if we plug this into the switch, the switch will provide power and network to our access point. So if you have four access points, you can have them powered off these four ports here. And then maybe you have a PoE security camera, you could plug it in these or telephones, things like that. You could also just run eight access points if you have that many off this. But this is going to be the cleanest, most economical way to do it if you have lots of devices. Now say if you're in a home environment, you might have an internet router like this. So this is an old DSL router. I've since upgraded to fiber, but this you would plug in your DSL line here, and then here you would output this to your computers. This had a built-in Wi-Fi access point. I never have used it. It's just not a very good access point, and it wasn't in an ideal location. So if you had this in a home, you might have this in the basement. You could run ethernet from here into a PoE injector, and then run a cable from PoE out up to say the ceiling of the first floor of the dwelling and have this connected in and have your access point where people are. You could also plug this directly into here and then power this with the 12 volt adapter. So I'm just giving you an overview of how this can all be set up. Now for now, the way I'm going to power this is I will connect this into my switch so it'll have internet and I will plug this in to power here. So to get this set up on my network, I'll be using the Ingenious Fit app. So I'll be doing that on my iPad. You can also use a smartphone. So the app is called Fit Express. Now I've already installed it, so I'll log in and you can create an account. So I want to add this access point, so I'll hit plus in the upper right. It says set up a new network, I'll hit next. It says add device. So I'm going to scan the QR code on the bottom. So that's scanned in the device, I'll hit next. It says enter network site name. I'm just going to call this basement. I'll change my country. Now it's important you set your country. It could be using that to set the Wi-Fi limits and such. And I'll set my time zone. 
I'll hit create. It says the device can take five to eight minutes to upgrade the firmware when it first connects to the Fit Express platform. After the firmware upgrade, your device will be ready and the power LED will be solid on. I'll hit manage network. So here we have my two networks. So I can tap on it. So I'm going to wait a few minutes while this is getting connected up and then we'll test it out. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. We can see that the access point says one now. So on the very bottom, we can see it says dashboard, devices, clients, and Wi-Fi. I'll tap on Wi-Fi. Now this comes with two access points pre-configured. You want to make sure you change these. They're both open, so there's no passwords on them. We have guest Wi-Fi and staff Wi-Fi. So I'll tap on the guest Wi-Fi and I'm going to turn that off. I don't want that right now. I'll go back to the fit staff Wi-Fi. I'll tap that. So it has some different options here. If we tap on radio, we can turn on or off 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. We have different security types. We can go to password and here we can enter a password. Below that we have more options. We have VLAN ID, network addressing, bandwidth limit, and Wi-Fi scheduling. So I'll hit save at the top. Now I would also typically change the name from Fit Staff Wi-Fi to something of my choosing, but I will leave that for now. So I'll go back. Now I'll go into my Wi-Fi settings. So now I'm in my Wi-Fi settings. I can see the Fit Staff Wi-Fi. I'll tap on it. I'll enter in my password. I'll hit join. And now we've connected to it. So now I'm going to go into a web browser. So here I have a speed test. This is on my network. So this is testing my network speed and not the internet speed. So this is connected to the access point with gigabit ethernet. So we'll measure the Wi-Fi link. I'll hit start. So for download, we got 625 megabits per second. For upload, we got 449 megabits per second. So here I have my laptop connected to the same network. I'll hit start. And here we got around 600 up and 600 down. So let's go back into the app. Now if I click on clients, we can see the two devices. We can see stats. So for both devices, we can see that they were connected at five gigahertz. And if we tap on that, we can get information related to the connection. Now, the nice thing about these access points is you can hook multiples of them up. So here I have a second one. I'll open it up. I'm going to connect this up to my PoE switch, which is in a separate location, and then I'll connect it up with the app. Again, to add this, I have devices selected at the bottom. I'll hit plus, I'll hit add device. I'll scan that QR code, I'll give it a name. Now I just added number two to the end of it. You'll want to give it better naming and all the username, passwords, and things like this in this video I'm just using for this demonstration and I'll change them later. So I'll hit register, I'll hit manage the device, and here we have two access points here and I'll give this a couple minutes to propagate. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. So now we see the second access point is there and it's configured and ready to go with the Wi-Fi information we set up earlier. So you can install these around your home or business to give you wide area Wi-Fi coverage. Now to test the second one for sake of ease, I'm going to disconnect this one just to make sure I'm not connecting to it. Now I'll go into my Wi-Fi setting and make sure I'm still on the same SSID. I'm still connected. So that means it switched over automatically and I'll redo my speed test. There we go. So that's the ingenious EWS 356 fit Wi-Fi access point. I think this is a great way to get enterprise level Wi-Fi without the complexities of an enterprise system. And you can start with just one of these and then you can expand it as you go. Now ingenious fit also has things like outdoor access points. So if you have an outdoor area, you can have your indoor access point and then you can have your outdoor access point to really expand your network. And as I showed earlier, they have that controller if you want to keep everything on site. And again, this would work well in a small or medium sized business and you want to do your own Wi-Fi, and you want to be able to centrally manage it or manage it from the cloud. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.